A Democrat governor has declared an end to the pandemic. All as Biden's control over his own party collapses. In this video, we're going to take a look at the declaration by one Democrat governor that the COVID emergency is over and done with. We're going to see how he's the latest Democrat politician to turn his back on bumbling Biden. And stick with me to the very end of this video when I'll show you how more voters than ever are abandoning the Democrats in droves. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Stevie with you. Great to be with you as always. I am your daily fake news antidote as each and every day I provide patriotic analysis to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, gang, it's Christmas time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And what could possibly be a better gift for the patriots in your life than Mike Lindell's My Pillow products? Gang, they're simply the best. Every night, I sleep with the best pillows and sheets in the market from my friend Mike Lindell. And you can, and the loved ones in your life can too. And this this Christmas, Mike and his company are offering the lowest prices in their history with promo code Turley. So get this, the classic MyPillow is $69.98, but now it's only $19.98 if you use my code Turley at checkout. And you can use code Turley for savings on over 200 products for your family and friends this Christmas. So don't wait. Click on the link below to support Mike and MyPillow and give the patriots in your life the gift of the best sleep of their lives, so absolutely love you for it. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Colorado's Democrat governor is defying bumbling Biden by openly declaring over the weekend that the pandemic is officially over. People have had it with the lockdowns and the mandates, and as far as the heavily Democratic state of Colorado is concerned, they are moving on. Colorado Governor Jared Polis declared in an interview over the weekend that the COVID emergency is over, saying that if people aren't vaccinated, well, then that's, quote, their own darn fault if they get sick. Well, what do you know? A Democrat who recognizes the role of personal responsibility in society. Now, while the Democrat governor did reiterate that as far as he was concerned, local jurisdictions could institute their own mandates however they uh, saw best, the state would stay out of it. As far as the state of Colorado government is concerned, the pandemic is over, the emergency is over, and whether people are vaccinated or not, that is their choice. Now, needless to say that this Democratic governor is openly defying bumbling Biden. And as it turns out, he's hardly alone. It's becoming increasingly clear that the bumbling Biden regime has lost the one thing needed to govern with even a shred of effectiveness, and that is the support of their own party. Reports are starting to come out detailing the obvious. Sleepy Joe is losing or indeed has flat out lost his grip on the Democratic Party, and he's losing the Democrats in two major ways. He's losing the political leverage that he has over Democrat politicians and even more significantly, he's seeing his party hemorrhaging countless voters who want nothing to do with being identified in any way, shape, or form as a Democrat. So he's losing control sort of vertically over the politicians in his party, and he's losing control horizontally as he's seeing membership beginning to dwindle. So we're seeing a twofold defection here. Let's start with the Democrat politicians who are abandoning Biden. West Virginia's Democrat Senator Joe Manchin. Man, does he a thorn in their side. He gave a series of interviews last week where he basically pronounced the whole Bill Back Better nonsense dead. He made it clear that the bill in its present form isn't going anywhere in the Senate, nor should it. We, I mean, we got to remember this $3 trillion socialist spending absurdity known as Build Back Better. It only has 26% support in West Virginia. Biden himself only has 19% support. So there's absolutely no incentive on earth for Manchin to support Biden in any way, shape, or form politically. But it wasn't just Manchin's turning his back on Build Back Better. I did a video late last week on Manchin joining fellow Democrat John Tester of Montana to vote to kill Biden's federal vax mandate on private businesses. It was a shocking repudiation of Biden. It's extremely rare that the president's party would vote to overturn one of his executive orders, but that's precisely what Manchin and Tester did. And the defections kept coming. Manchin, Tester, and several other Democrats teamed up to tank Biden's choice for comptroller of the currency, Soleil Omarova, who was a literal bona fide 
Marxist. Well, she's gone. They want nothing to do with her, despite the fact that MSNBC shilled for her constantly. And interestingly, she was the third Biden nominee to get sunk by unhappy Democrat senators. But as Charles Cook over at National Review put it, this is just becoming par for the course in Washington Democrats turning their backs on Biden. The gun control bills passed by the House, they're dead in the Senate. And they're completely pointless anyway. Even if they were to pass, they'd be overturned by the Supreme Court. Democrats have basically killed gun control. They've killed uh, filibuster reform. They've killed the Equality Act. They've killed for the People Act. They've killed the proposed expansion of the federal minimum wage and the codification of Roe v. Wade in the statutory law. Are you seeing a pattern here? It seems every opportunity that Democrat politicians have to vote against Biden, they're doing so, and they're doing it very, very publicly. And Charles Cook details why. Take a look at this. In Arizona, Biden's approval rating is just 35%. In Montana, it's 31%. In New Hampshire, it's 43%. In Colorado, where the Democrat governor just declared the pandemic over, it's 40%. And in Virginia, where Terry McAuliffe was forced to disavow Biden during the recent gubernatorial election, Biden's approval is an abysmal 38%. In Kansas and Michigan, in the two states whose Democrat governors have come out against the federal vaccine mandate, Biden's approval is 27%, 39% respectively. And this, of course, points to the second major way Biden is losing control over his party, and that's the mass defections of Democrats who are increasingly leaving the party. The Democrat Party is shrinking as we speak and may indeed end up becoming a permanent minority party. Now, before we get into that, I did want to invite you to join our Insiders Club by clicking on the link below. You're going to absolutely love it. We'll be talking to each other tonight live online, 8 p.m. Eastern time, where you get to ask me and my special guests your questions, and we take deep dives into things we just can't get into here. As an Insiders Club member, in addition to talking live together each week on Monday nights, you get all kinds of perks, you get all kinds of discounts on our merch, and you have access to a special message board where you get to share your postings and enjoy fellowship with an international community of patriots. You're going to love it. And to make it even better, you get your first week absolutely free. No obligations. So don't wait. Click on that link below and join our Insiders Club. And I'll see you tonight for Insiders Live at 8 p.m. All right. So take a look at this. The latest poll from the Washington Wall Street Journal of Latino voters across the nation found that if the election were held today, astonishingly, 44% would vote for Biden, 43% would vote for Trump. That's totally unprecedented 50-50 split that promises a political earthquake in the next cycle of elections. We've already seen it in Texas, where districts made up of 80-85% Latinas have begun to defect in mass from the Democrats and vote Republican. I think the last three or four local elections, these otherwise reliably blue districts flipped red. And the number one issue was illegal immigration. The exact opposite of what we're told constantly by the mainstream media and what they peddle every single day. According to mainstream media, the Latino vote overwhelmingly wants open borders, when in reality, the Latino vote wants border security, the very border security that Trump enacted as president. So the Democrats are hemorrhaging Latinos. Glenn Youngkin's win in Virginia included 55% of Hispanics voting for him according to the exit polls. And this was largely because Latinos are the most conservative demographic in the nation when it comes to things like abortion, school choice, and the like. And so they're beginning to really drop the whole cultural Marxist nonsense that traditionally attracted them to the Democrats. And now they're embracing the conservative vision of civic nationalism championed by Trump and the rising patriot movement across the nation, indeed across the entire globe. And it's not just Latinos. Democrats are actually losing what is in many respects their core base, and that's women. Now take a look at this. The Philadelphia Inquirer recently published a report on exit polling from the Virginia election that found that an astonishing 75% of white women without college degrees voted for the Republican Glenn Youngkin. And not just Youngkin, of course, Winsome Sears for lieutenant governor and their new Republican attorney general. 75% of white women without college degrees. They're fast becoming 
recognized as the new political subject. They're in the political driver's seat for elections for the foreseeable future. And they're part of an even larger defection from the Democrat Party, which is our, your uh, blue-collar manufacturing workers, factory workers, who have historically voted exclusively Democrat, but who defected in droves to vote for Trump in 2016 and again in 2020. I mean, I never get tired of citing the statistics from the 2016 election, where 200 counties, nearly 200 counties, have voted Democratic in every presidential election since the 1980s, by often by a 20-point margin, suddenly swung over and voted for Trump by a comparable 20-point margin. So these are states like Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, Pennsylvania, that Hillary was supposedly guaranteed to win since every Democratic presidential candidate since like 1988 had won them. It was called the Blue Wall, and it gave Democrat presidential candidates their victory by delivering the electoral votes needed to win the presidency. And that is until President Trump showed up and he smashed the blue wall in 2016. And I don't think he's going to have a problem doing that again in 2024. So all of this is to say that bumbling Biden is collapsing. He's collapsing in terms of support from his own Democrat politicians. And he's collapsing in terms of the mass defection going on among Democrat voters. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video on what scholars are calling President Trump's coming electoral landslide. How does that sound for a Monday morning? You're going to absolutely love it. So make sure to click on the link and I'll see you over there. God bless.